So, yeah, mid-conversation, I decided I have to turn the camera on. And like you said... Yeah. Unless you have a deity that decides, let's start everything in media res, in the middle of everything, we're just going to start the universe smack dab in the middle of everything. Like, there was a Big Bang and stuff, but we just fast-forwarded all of that. So it's actually only 6,000 years old, with the other millions of years that must have passed just having happened beforehand, I guess, is a little... over there. Yeah, because, of course, natural law isn't what's important. God's law is... Oh, of course. Yeah, because, you know, how exactly how much you have to pay for selling your daughter and stuff like that, yeah, that's... Because when we look at God's law, we find such gems as people who have fabrics of different cloths together must be killed. Or if you have a disobedient child, stone him to death. You know, I mean, the laws of God seem to make lots of sense. Um... Oh, yeah, let's... Yeah, God is so, um, fucking moral. Let's maul 42 children with two bears because they, they the profit because hey baldy get out of here baldy well they all deserve to die thank oh, you oh yeah God. they deserve death no, nothing not, less than death not not nothing less than death they deserve to be torn to pieces by bears because that's a totally reasonable response by an enlightened individual um or you know the flooding of the entire world the genocide of human race just about oh, yeah not complete genocide because like what four dudes lived out of a population of millions according to the bible oh but no this is objective morality yeah that comes from a subject which means that everything you're talking about is completely and fucking coherent well the thing is why can't we apply morals to God? I want to know who exactly said that God is above that, and why is God so special? Really, like, who, who decided that God just is unaccountable to all normal morals and ideologies? Like, that if God kills people, it's great. Might but if I right. kill people, it's wrong. What? Okay, yeah, God's got this unlimited understanding, wisdom, blah de fucking da but the core issue is... Does, is life not sacred, right? Is life not meaningful and worth preserving? I would say it is, inherently. And I don't think anything you are or can do should change that fact. And I don't care if you are God or a hobo or anything in between, killing is wrong. Objectively speaking, this is so. Objectively speaking. Well, no, there are certain situations... Sure, which... certain situations... But the abject murder of a million people or more for sins. What sins? And why did they deserve the flooding of the planet? Was that the only way to answer the problem? If you're a completely omniscient, omnipotent, all-powerful being? Is that the only answer you got? Just kill them all. Fuck them. And of course, you know, we, we know that these uh, people who believe in these things, they don't view it critically. They don't actually no. view this stuff. And so, you know, oh, well, our God is timeless and eternal and stuff. And what does that they, even mean? Um, what that means is we're ignoring the fact that we know that he was developed by humans, by cults from way back when. We know the history of this. We do, in fact, actually we know, know the when, of it. We know when the one god of theism was fucking... The monotheism came about in like 600 BCE. We know when these things happened, but... Well, fuck that, we're not gonna... Well, the Bible says that Abraham found God in some no time, and... By the way, question. Where was God before that? What, he just dipped out after the uh, whole garden deal and just chilled until some guy named Abraham was born? Well, he decided he wanted to wrestle with this one particular dude and stuff, you know, but he couldn't possibly show and reveal himself to us now that we could actually, um, you know, record whether or not he fucking existed in a way that wasn't just writing it down on stone tablets. So, God is, in essence, the gateway to heaven, if I am understanding this whole Christianity deal right. Mm-hmm. So why then would the sole gateway to everlasting paradise decide to hide his existence and play games? And 
His word isn't fucking understandable by me because there's so much context and nuance. And the, no, it was, this is a parable. That's literal. And, 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 and I nobody can even agree, in, even in the faith. Nope. If you talk to the Catholics, the whole Bible's basically a parable, and they believe in the catechism. There is no such thing as a Christian at this point. And you told me about that before, your opinion about that, how there is no such thing as a real Christian, according Not to... Not if we talk about old, ancient Christianity. If we actually look at the historicity of it. If we look at the origins of what Christianity was, no, today's Christians don't even have a relation to that, almost, like, at all. The way they keep on changing their shit, especially with the way society keeps changing... I mean, you know, we got a blatant example of that with the Mormon church. Like, oh, well, black people are okay now, I guess. Yeah. Well, let's not, I mean, we can talk about Joe Smith anyway. Like, and, oh, wait, the Indians were actually Jews. That, I can't even finish that. Like, <laughs> I just, he loses me if the Indians are actually the lost tribes of Israel. What? Uh, he he loses me at the how he fucking came to this knowledge. Well, of course, that's he, that's more ridiculous. But if you listen to what he has to say, you, you can just go, wait, that's not even on the parallel to what is reality. That's like all the way over here compared to reality. Not to mention, uh, uh, going back to the fact that it's just, okay, deny all of science... Except where we have to accept it, which at this point it's like, oh, well, you know, we don't want to, so let's put it in the textbooks that creationism is right. That fucking shit with the Texas textbooks. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a whole separate deal of bullshit nonsense. Like, God. you know, if you feel like, oh, it's child abuse to teach your kid religion or to not teach him religion, you know it's child abuse? Teaching a child in the public school system a pack of lies. That, I think, constitutes some level of child abuse somewhere. Religious or irreligious? Like, it's not about religion or not religion there. It's about, we know, scientifically speaking, and you can debate this all you want, but legitimate science knows that the world is not 6,000 years old. Oh, where's your uh, peer-reviewed scientific study that refutes all of science? Because uh, you'd have to start by refuting gravity. If you want to start this whole, the Earth is only 6,000 years old thing, you'd have to start by telling us gravity doesn't work the way we think it does. Which, by the way, in case you haven't noticed, it totally does. <laughs> or, of course, you know, well, all of the stars that we see aren't actually there, or they're just, like, some things, and because, you know, the universe isn't actually that old, because it's not actually that big, because, going back to the quantum theory thing, about like, what you were mentioning about how things have to have been here for how yes. long they have... For everything to make sense. Yeah. Otherwise, the only answer is that a more or less malevolent deity just decided to play a trick on everybody. It just happens to look exactly like everything's millions of years, all down to the tiniest detail that we could possibly analyze. So your god is a troll? In essence, that's what it comes down to. He's either just a troll or he's actively malicious, considering he's trying to lead people away from the one path to salvation. If you use the reason and logic that you were given, God apparently expects you to forego that specifically in order to maintain your faith in stuff that we know is demonstrably false. Well, what false. kind of creator God gives humanity free will, understanding, reason, and rationality, and then tells them to, to not use any of that? Well, it's the same fucking shit that you get with homosexuals being born that way, which the science tells us. Well, then again, they argue that point you know, in a much dumber way, which is they aren't born that way. Then choose to be gay. Now. Now, do it. Get some butt sex on. Right now. Or at least start jerking off to some dudes and some butts. I want to see it. No, you don't. No, for <laughs> that instance, I do. Because I'm going to laugh when they can. <laughs> or I'm going to laugh even harder when they totally can. <gasps> yes. Oh, I love the fact that fucking studies have come out showing that, yes, oh, we have finally, yes, we've scientifically proven it that homophobes are, um, that people who are raised in homes where you are exposed to homophobia in general or people who have unacknowledged sexual attractions are the people who hate those people most. This is both true and logically simple. If it's, you think it, about it. It was just assumed. Now we know it's true. So, yay science on that one. 
If you hate something and refuse to acknowledge it about yourself, the easiest way to deal with it is to externalize. If you are gay or secretly fear being gay or have gay attractions and hate it, the simplest way to deal with it is to pretend that that doesn't exist and hate the other people who have that trait because it's their fault. It doesn't make any logical sense, but that doesn't stop people from doing it. I think it's funny that we're having this discussion based on the Judeo-Christian God, when he's one of multitudes. Mm -hmm. Like, I think too many people give an unfair preference to this on both sides of the argument, where we have atheists arguing purely against Christian God. When, in reality, we need to stop giving these people the preferential treatment of treating them as though they're the only faith in the world. Well, that's the that's the whole American centric bullshit where you know these people have so much sway in the country in general, in the culture, and in, in the politics and everything. But I think we need to actually kind of reroute that discussion a little bit to, oh, you're going to be talking about God? Well, I'm going to talk about Shiva. What have you heard from Shiva lately? You know, if you could believe in one God, who would you believe in? Luvatar. Well, if I could believe in one God, I'd believe in me. I'm God. It has as much reason and rationality as any other faith. Again, it's a you can't prove me wrong. It's a blind assertion. It is. That's can't that's prove the me whole wrong. that's the whole fucking point of the spaghetti monster. Which was a pretty neat idea, I thought. Is you can't disprove him. Step one: you can't disprove the claim. And if we're working on the logic that I've seen so many theists use, that's all you need. You can't prove God isn't real. Well, I also can't prove the Easter Bunny isn't real. Apparently, you don't understand the burden of proof, motherfucker. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And as Christopher Hitchens so eloquently said, any state, any claim that is made without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Yeah. Pretty simple, actually, if you think about it. It's very succinct. I love it. If I suddenly said, apples are made of cheese. I believe you because I'm... Like, it's just a blind assertion. I have no proof or evidence. I'm just making a statement. Just like when I said, well, I'll believe in me. I'm God. But you have so, to have faith. Should I have faith that apples are made of cheese? Despite the fact that it's demonstrably not true? Again, it's, it's the superseding of reason, logic, and all of these mental faculties that apparently you believe God gave to you to not use. Why? That's That's the thing that really cracks me up. Or it's like, or how about that more fundamental issue of God made sin? God made sin. There's no two ways about this. We didn't just invent the fucking concept because God made everything. That is. He made it all. He made sin. You cannot argue this. Sin existed before the devil. You cannot argue this as a Christian. It's impossible. Your own Bible says it. You can read between the lines and figure out God made sin. God punishes us for the thing he made us have. Or the whole tree thing, you know. <laughs> How oh, you, on earth... You cannot have knowledge of right and wrong so you wouldn't know it was right or wrong to fucking not... To exactly. Go against what God told so you to what, do. Disobeying God is wrong. Yet, the people, the Bible says, that it says this clearly, had no knowledge of good and evil or the concept of good and evil. How could they have known disobeying God was wrong if they had no concept of wrong at all? Uh, it's it's nonsense. And then, of course, we're going to punish the entirety of humanity until Jesus because I set you up to fail. Not to mention the fact that I'm fucking omniscient and I knew all this would happen from the offset to begin with. Which, when we think about God being omniscient, we realize something. God is culpable for every atrocity and criminal act ever committed in history. He is a culpable partner to all of them. Yeah. God's guilty of every crime ever committed. He knew about each and every one of them, from some guy stealing some money to mass bloodshed and murder perpetrated by people like Hitler and Stalin. He knew about all of them ahead of time and chose to do nothing. But he's a just and loving God. And what loving God would allow Hitler... I submit this. But free will. But 
free will. Should I just allow somebody to kill somebody because they have free will? No, you have a necessary responsibility for your fellows once they step past a certain line. And God has literally, he has all power, so with literally no effort, he could stop all evil. And the fact that he doesn't is a choice he makes, and is he not culpable for that choice? He is. He must be. Or else, what is the meaning of morality itself? If past a certain level of power, it doesn't apply. That goes back to this whole philosophy of the question of like, you know, is something immoral because of God type thing, you know, which is why it's like, oh, so is it just God follows objective morality or something mor moral or immoral because God says so? Because at that point, God can arbitrarily decide that it is moral to do everything we currently consider immoral. And would you fact, then do history it? History says that's what happens. Actually, if you look at the Bible and all of the things that God condones in the Bible, when the Jews, you know, crash the walls of uh, Jericho, people like talk about that, and they don't like talk about what happened to the survivors. Oh, what's that? Take for yourselves the women and children. Kill the men. I don't think they were taking the women and children to have tea time. I'm just saying. 